looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. How many of you know who I'm talking about? I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Hallelujah. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody. Nobody greater. Come on, y'all. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. That's all we're saying. Nobody greater. Nobody greater.
like a rushing wind in this place. Send your anointing, God, and have your way. Move by your spirit. If you don't move, God, we won't be moved. Move by your spirit. silent before him. Hallelujah. There's nobody greater than you, Lord. Nobody greater than you. Lord, you are welcome in this place. Have your way this morning, Father. God, we glorify you this morning. We magnify you this morning, Lord. We lift you up, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we praise you this morning, Father God. We've come to worship, Father God, in the name of you. Jesus, we praise you this morning. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do, God. God, the service is in your hand today, Father. Do what you want, how you want, when you want, where you want, because you are God. God, we just glorify you for the word that shall come forth this morning, Father. We thank you, Father God, as you use our pastor, Lord, for your glory, God. God, we thank you, Father God, for your presence in this building today, Father God. Thank you, God, for covering us right now, God, with your blood, with your spirit, and with yourself. Use us this morning, God, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. First, give an honor to God, to Pastor Solomon, to Prince George and Georgia Vineyard here to welcome you this morning. Um, are there any visitors here with us today? All right, so then we're all family here. Um, so as we know, to, um, this month is Women's History Month, um, but also I wanted to make it um, known that this month is also colon, rectal, um, awareness month, that's why I'm wearing this blue, and um, just wanted to let you know that um, colon cancer is the third most common cancer diagnosed in men and women, and it's the fourth leading cause of death, so the best intervention is prevention, so everyone, um, if you're at that age, they lower the age to 45, you get a colonoscopy up to about 85, so please go out and get your colon, um, colonoscopy. civil rights activist. Gloria Vincent was born in 1922 in Baltimore, Maryland, and moved to Cambridge, Mass Cambridge, Maryland, where Miss Vincent began her lifelong service, accomplishments, and legacy. A graduate of Howard University with a bachelor's in Scientology, Scientology and Sociology in 1922, Harvard University is where she became involved in social activism as a student of protest against segregationist policies. Also, Gloria Vincent was a member of an affluent family with wealth, education, and privilege. Gloria still suffered racial injustice. Returned to Cambridge in 1962, she married a local school teacher and started her family. Gloria Vincent was affiliated with the Cambridge Nonviolent Action Committee, the CNAC acronym, and assumed their co-position in 1963, Gloria Richardson participated in a peaceful sit-in where she was arrested. On January 23, 1963, I mean, I'm sorry, on July 23, 1963, the Treaty of Cambridge was signed, which helped activists secure, secure, I mean, which helped, which helped activists secure resources for public housing, voting protection, and civil economic rights. Ms. Richardson played a vital role with the Kennedy administration in working with the CNAC to help the residents come out from under Jim Crow laws of segregation and all its economic disadvantages. Ms. Richardson moved to New York in the later years where she advised the Black Action Federation, the CNAC, the CNAC successor, and worked at the NYC police, uh, NYC department for aging. In 2017, the state of Maryland honored her legacy by dedicating February 11th as Gloria Richardson Day. Her autobiography in 2018, The, Struggling, the Struggle is Eternal. One quote, in struggle, I became stronger. I became more of a fighter because of the energy of the people passing through me, which, which wonderfully illustrates the lifelong resolve. Gloria Richardson died July 15th, 2021, in New York City, and will be remembered for his diligent work to help establish a new image for black women as a warrior for all her people. Amen. 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 Thank you.
Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we could do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 David said, I was glad. What did he say? Said unto me. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. This morning I want to read just a, uh, a few things to you. I have a card here um, that says, Reliable Servants. They're the binding of the Bible. Their acts are rarely recited and their names seldom mentioned. Yet, were it not for their loyal devotion to God, many great events never would have occurred. Your servant's heart is such a blessing. Thank you. To my Corinthian family, thank you for your continued prayers throughout my health challenges. I am truly grateful. Please continue praying as I work on my recovery. In Christ, Sister Wanda Lodho. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm so glad to see the entire Lodho family in worship last weekend as well. Amen. Uh, Half Christ Will Travel Ministries. Um, Pastor Solomon, Corinthian Church, Half Christ Travel would like to thank you for your special gifts to the mission on February 4th, 2024. It was truly a blessed, wonderful group of gifts. We know your prayers are wrapped in the gifts. Again, thank you and God bless you, Sister Catherine E. Jetter. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Um, at this time, we're going to have a, an announcement by Sister Sylvia Hicks. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we're thanking God for the way he's been blessing and expanding uh, that ministry and outreach opportunity. Uh, I was told that uh, the women and girls ministry had a great time yesterday at the coffee clash. Amen. Amen. Great, great time of, of fun, fellowship, and food. Amen. And thank you all for sending some home for the pastor, too. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, I received a phone call yesterday from one of our uh, brothers in the church, and I was excited uh, when I heard the call because uh, the call um, made aware to me that uh, several men in the, in the congregation had been having some conversations and uh, they, like so many of us, have been deeply disturbed uh, by the amount of violence that's taking place in our neighborhoods. Amen? Amen. 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 And the Spirit of God is, is stirring the hearts of the men uh, to come together and to uh, see uh, what God may be calling us to do to respond in that regard. So I'm going to ask that today, um, immediately following the service, uh, that all of the men in the house would meet me up front here, and we're going to have a, a brief discussion, um, and I know the women will be praying for us, amen? amen. Uh, that we will have a brief discussion on uh, what we maybe need to do to, to respond in this regard, Amen. amen. So immediately following the service, just a few minutes, guys. 
I'll see you in the front of the church. This is the, the Lenten season as we have been talking about. And for those of you who um, received the email and are on the distribution list, and if you are not receiving the email, please call the church office and um, have Mrs. Pryor add your uh, email address to that distribution. There's a lot of uh, important information that we share, announcements and things of that nature. But particularly uh, during this, this uh, celebration season, uh, several of our members provide some devotional reflections. Have any of you had a chance to, to check out any of those devotional reflections? Amen. Amen. Well, you, if you haven't, you're missing out. And so I want to encourage you to go back and um, as you're getting the, those important dates for what's going on in the life of the church, take some time and read those devotional uh, reflections. And I, I uh, guarantee you that you will be encouraged in your walk with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We still believe in devotions here, don't we? Yes. Amen. 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 Um, just a reminder, we are swiftly approaching the uh, climax of our Lenten season. Um, we have the joint uh, worship service on Maundy Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, with Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown and Wayland Baptist Church of North Philadelphia, where our very own Pastor James Mack is the pastor. Amen. And Pastor Mack will be bringing the word on Maundy Thursday. And then, Lord willing, the following morning, Good Friday, we will have our seven last words service beginning at 12 noon. Uh, Wayland will be uh, worshiping with us on that occasion as well. And we have um, uh, many preachers coming in, um, many, right? Seven preachers coming in <laughs> to um, bring the word of the Lord to us on that occasion. And I want to encourage you to uh, be there. Uh, this is our holy season of the year. Amen? Amen. Amen. All, all the other folks, they are uh, faithful to uh, observe their religious traditions and, and uh, holy days and holy seasons. Well, we have some holy seasons too, don't we? Amen. 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 And we need to be excited about what the Lord has done for us. Amen? Amen. 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 Guess what? If, if we don't get excited about it, no wonder... No wonder our children and grandchildren don't get excited about it. Amen? Amen. 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 But this year, um, on um, Resurrection Sunday morning, um, in response to uh, feedback that we have been receiving over the years, we have uh, reinstituted this year. Um, Two occasions for worship on Resurrection Sunday morning. There will be a sunrise worship service on Resurrection Sunday morning at 6 a.m. Um, amen. 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 Uh, there will be a sunrise worship service at 6 a.m. on um, Resurrection Sunday morning, uh, followed by a breakfast Fellowship and celebration. Amen? Amen. 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 Don't act like y'all don't like to eat now. <laughs> Amen. We have a resurrection uh, worship service at 6 a.m. Followed by a uh, breakfast celebration. If, if, and if you are uh, planning to attend, please call the church office so that we make sure that we have enough eggs and bacon and sausage and all the stuff that you like. All right? Amen? That's that's for the next the next one, okay? <laughs> Sorry, seriously, I, I don't know what the menu is. I don't know what the menu is, but uh, there will be breakfast. Amen? Amen, amen. And we'll we can talk more about that as we go. Um, but yes, so we will have six a.m. worship, followed by breakfast, and then the Sunday school um, ministry will have our resurrection celebration, and then of course at eleven a.m. we will have our uh, resurrection, uh, our second resurrection Sunday worship service. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to um, encourage you to mark your calendars, spread the word, 
and we look forward to having a great time of worship in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask that our trustees will come for our offertory. Please stand for our offertory prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning, Father God, for enabling us, Father, to give back to you only a portion of what you have given to us. God, we thank you, Father God, for all that you have done for us, God. You laid down your life for us on Calvary's cross, God. So, God, we give back to you, Father God, a portion of the things, the finances, our time, our talents, our gifts, God. Back to you, Father God. And, God, as we give, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Father God, that and, and thank you that these gifts and talents, Father God, are used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, God. God, we glorify you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. All things come of thee. All things come of thee, O oh Lord, and of thine own, as we give from thee. Amen. You may be seated. John chapter 4, 43 through 54. John chapter 4, 43 through 54. Please say amen. 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 After the two days he left the Galilee, now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet had no honor in his own country. When he when he arrived in Gilead, the Gileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. But once more, he visited Canaan and Gilead when he had turned the water into wine. And there were a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Gilead from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he acquired to the time when his son got better, they said to him, that's the way at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time that Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his whole household believed this was the second sign Jesus performed after coming from Judah to Gilead. The word about the people.
Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching over all of us as we slept last night, Father God. And waking us up to a brand new day we never saw before. Thank you for sending us on our way, Father God. With your mercies, Father God. Allow us to get here safely. And we leave here to go home safely, Father God. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless all our families, our neighbors. Continue to watch over this city, Father God, as we go through this time of violence, Lord. Father God, we ask that you would continue to bless our leaders, Lord. Just lead God and direct them into doing the right thing, Father God. Just to help us all, Father God, through our daily goings and comings. I ask that you continue to bless this church family, Father God, and all those who are sick. Just bless them with the healing and strengthen them where they weak. I ask that you continue, Father God, just to bless the homes, bless them with shelter. Bless the hungry with food and the naked with clothing. And we continue to give you the praise and the glory. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.
Anybody need to touch from the Lord this morning? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why don't, we, why don't we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for the gift of life on this day. But Father, this song reminds us that apart from your grace, apart from your power, we cannot be the men and women that you have called us to be. And so we humbly wait in your presence this morning, singing and praying and waiting, asking God that in your mercy, you might pour out your power upon us on this day. God, someone needs a touch from you. Someone needs strength where they're weak. Someone needs wisdom where they are ignorant. Someone, oh God, needs the power to forgive where they have been hurt and damaged. Father, whatever it need is that we need on this day, God, we look to you, for you are the source and the giver of life. God, we love you, and we ask that you would have your way in this place today. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our most blessed redeemer. Let all who believe that say amen, 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 amen. and amen. 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 How many believe God heard your prayer this morning? Amen. 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 He is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Before we go to the word this morning, I, I want to uh, mention once again to Continue to keep our beloved um, Chester and Margarita Boyer and their entire family in prayer. Uh, they, their brother and brother-in-law had went home to be with the Lord, and we ask that you continue to pray for that entire family. Amen. 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 Uh, I also want to thank uh, Sister Lauren for always doing such a wonderful job reading the Scripture this morning. Amen. Amen. She makes it look easy, but, but those of you who ever had to come and stand out in front of the congregation, you know it's not as easy as it looks. Amen? Amen. Amen. And also to Deacon Griggs for always being such a faithful deacon and leading us to the throne of grace this morning. And to our choir. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, these are not just preliminary comments, but those of us who come each Sunday and benefit from the worship experience know that there is no one thing or one person that, that, that uh, creates the proper uh, worship experience and atmosphere. Obviously, there is no worship without God, but God moves in the hearts and minds of his people. And as we make ourselves available to him, God has a way of manifesting his grace and his power in our midst. Amen? Amen. 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 So many to see, so glad to see so many back in worship this morning. I don't want to start calling names because I, I'll forget and somebody get mad and send a letter to the office. Amen? <laughs> but to all of you who are back, we're so glad to have you with us. Amen? Amen. 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 I heard that from the back row. Amen. Amen. I'll see you at the service. Amen. 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 The scripture has been read in your hearing from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, verses 43 through 54. Most of us are most familiar with the first uh, 42 verses of uh, the Gospel of St. John. That's the story of the woman at the well. Uh, but in verses 43 to 54, we have another very powerful story as verse 54 reminds us that this is the second sign that Jesus performed uh, when he came from Judea to Galilee. But in the interest of time this morning, I would just like to read again one verse in your hearing. It's all so good. 
But I want to focus our attention to St. John chapter 4 and verse 47. St. John chapter 4 and verse 47. And the word of the Lord reads from the Christian Standard Translation of the Bible. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea into Galilee, he went to him and pleaded with him to come down and heal his son. Since he was about to die. When this man, when, when this noble man heard that Jesus had come from Judea into Galilee, he went to him and pleaded with him to come down and heal his son. Why? Since he was about to die. With God's help this morning, I would like to preach and teach from the thought, Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer. In John chapter 4, verses 43 to 54, we read about a certain nobleman who had an issue in his life. His son had a fever that couldn't be broken that left his son at the point of death. And the boy would have died had Jesus not stepped in and saved him. Had Jesus not stepped in and healed him. This man's son was, was so close to death. That this healing gave him new life. And, and so this, this healing church is a picture of how Jesus saves us from our sins. And brings us from eternal death to eternal life. Watch it, through believing his word. Can, can I say that again? I, I said, John chapter 4 is a, it's a picture of how Jesus saves us from our sins. And he brings us from eternal death to eternal life. Listen, through believing his word. And so, salvation. How, how many people are saved here this morning? Come on now, don't play with me. How many of you are saved this morning? And, and so, salvation is to our hearts, minds, and souls what health is to the body. How many of you know that Jesus wants to break the fever in your life too. Yeah. Why? Because, listen, our fever is just a symptom of an even, even deeper problem. I, I said our fever is, is just a symptom of a deeper problem. And it's a symptom of how sin... It's okay to say sin in church, isn't it? It's a symptom of how sin has infected our souls. Now, <laughs> one of the things, Brother Kenny, one of the things that brings a pastor joy is, is to see the members of the church being changed by the power of the gospel. And, and, and it brings us joy. 
joy because it's a reminder that God is present with us. It, it's evidence that God's power is being manifested in the lives of God's people. It, it's a reminder to all of us that God really cares. I said God really cares. And, and Sister Cole, we, we know that God cares because God not only accepts us in the condition that God finds us, but he loves us too much to allow us to stay that way. Amen. That's why when we really develop a relationship with God in Christ, God begins to build us up where we've been torn down. When, when we really have a relationship with God in Christ, God begins to heal us where we have been hurt. Come on, do I have any witnesses here this morning? Is, is there anybody here who can testify how your encounter with Jesus changed your life? Come on now, can we be honest this morning? Some of us had issues with anger and were extremely violent in the past. You, you used to fight all the time and couldn't get along with anybody. Some of you men used to beat up on women. And some of you women used to beat up on men. But when you met Jesus, oh God, that person. When you met Jesus, he, he filled you with the Holy Ghost and, and God helped you to overcome your fears. God taught you when to be tough and when to be gentle. Tell somebody, the fever was broken. Some of us used to have a razor sharp tongue. You, you know the kind that, that will cuss you out in a minute? Oh, y'all get quiet now, huh? You, the, the kind of tongue that will cut a person down to size, degrade and disrespect them in front of everybody. But when you met Jesus. Yeah. Has anybody here ever met Jesus? Am, am I in the right church this morning? Have you met Jesus? When you met Jesus, Jesus changed your heart and then he tamed your tongue. Yeah. Now, the same tongue that was used to tear down and destroy is being used by God to build up and encourage. Tell somebody, the fever was broken. Okay, I, I didn't hit you yet. Some of us used to look for love in all the wrong places. Our, our, our poor self-image caused us to settle for anything and anybody in our romantic relationships. Come on now, blow. Oh. If you was a man, not if you were a man, the men, <laughs> I gotta fix that one then. Amen, that's right, brother. <laughs> you men, tried to trade love for sex. And you women tried to say, trade sex for love. But when you met Jesus, I said when you met Jesus, you 
experience real love. A love that's unconditional. A love that heals and a love that restores. Tell somebody the fever was broken. And, and the thing that all of us who have been touched by God have in common is that we discovered that Christ is the answer. I said Christ is the answer, y'all. And, and our lives were changed when we learned to have faith in God and faith in God's word. Come on now, anybody's life been changed out there? If, if you experience change by God, you learn to have faith in God and faith in God's word. I wish I had some witnesses here this morning. You see, when we have faith in God and in God's word, we'll discover that God makes ways out of our situations before we even realize that we're in it. Can, can I say that again? I, I think I said it too fast. When, when we have faith in God, and faith in God's word, you and I will discover that God makes ways out of our situations. Somebody say before. Before, before we even realize that we're in it. Amen. And so the good news is that if you and I find yourself in a situation, the good news is if, if you have brought your issue to church on your heart this morning, the way out of your situation is for us to accept by faith that Christ is the only answer to our problem. I said accept by faith. Do I have any believers here this morning? In our text, we just read it. The Father is called, oh, stay with me this morning, y'all. The, the Father is called a, a noble man, which, which means that he was a highly respected official who, who probably worked for Herod, who was the governor of Galilee. We're not sure, Brother Deacons, if, if he was a political figure or a military figure. But, but his close association with Herod lets us know that he was well connected. And, and can, I, can I use my imagination this morning? If, if this nobleman was living in our day and time, his, his status as a royal official would have given him the privilege of getting his children accepted into whatever schools he wanted them to attend. He, 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 he would have had tickets to the social events where the rich and the famous hung out at. Uh, if, if he got a traffic ticket or his child got pulled over by the police and deserved to be arrested, he only need to make a phone call to make this situation disappear. He was a man with authority who had the hookup. Somebody said he had the hookup. Stay with me, y'all. He had the hookup. But preachers, when his son got sick, he discovered that his connections and his associations had no authority to make his son's sickness go away. There, there was no phone call he could make to break his son's fever. So he had to watch his son die slowly. And there was nothing 
he could do about it. Can can we be real this morning, y'all? Some of you parents can identify with this father. You've had children addicted to drugs or who were involved in a relationship that was dragging them down to the gutter. And they refuse to let it go. Uh, Others have watched their children make choices that were leading them either to prison or to an early grave. Your, Your family member, like this boy in our text, was at the point of death. They had a real bad fever, y'all. But the Bible said, the Bible said, when this father heard, somebody say heard. Heard. When when this father heard that Jesus was in a nearby town, he, he immediately dropped everything he was doing to go to Jesus. We're not told how he heard about Jesus. Maybe he heard that Jesus can heal the sick. But perhaps he heard about the signs and wonders Jesus had just performed at the Passover celebration. But whatever the case may be, this father, like so many of us black folks today, was bougie. Y'all, 